this is a happy song. Take this ring and put it on a perfect fit. We can go wrong. Hey, let's start. Hello, mga kabayan. Kamusta po kayo? Magandang umaga. Today's vlog, ay bibigyan po namin kayo ng tips on how to buy your own property here in United Kingdom. I'm confident to to make this vlog because uh, uh, I, we can give you a professional advice dahil ang asawa ko po ay isang lawyer or tawag dali dito ay solicitor at ang 40 po niya is yung mga um, commercial properties na tinatawag. Dito po kasi sa UK, if you plan to buy a house or any property, you need to have a lawyer that will represent you. Ang alam ko po sa Pilipinas, kapag bibili tayo ng mga bahay or kahit anong property, basta may deed of sale or yeah, deed of sale or contract, um, okay na yun, no? Dito po hindi kailangan um, both the buyer and the seller needs to have um, um, a lawyer representing them uh, to give them advice, to to make all the papers for them, to complete the transaction for them, no? Just to make sure na, na legal yung transactions, no? So, ganun po ang patakaran dito. And uh, sabi ko nga po, uh, my husband is uh, a lawyer who who has clients who buy and sell the property. Kaya, uh, mabibigyan po namin kayo ng tamang advice on that. Alright? Now, just to give you a background, ito pong um, property namin or yung house namin, nabili po namin ito 2019. Okay? But before that, way back 2009, may sarili na pong property si husband and dun po kami unang tumira uh, when after after getting married. no? And then, um, we were dreaming of our another house, our dream house, wherein we could raise our own family, our children. Kaya nung nagkaroon po kami ng anak, so sabi namin, maybe it's time to buy a property. Pero ang plan po sana namin nun is mga five years pa. Five years pa, pag mga five years old na yung anak namin. Um, but even if wala pa kami yung plan to buy, nag-start na kami maghanap. Yun lang, uh, viewing, viewing lang, no? para lang makita namin kung ano ba talaga gusto namin, saan area gusto namin. Ang pinaka-priority kasi namin is yung merong malapit na magandang school. So, kaka-view, kaka-view, meron kami nakita. May nakita, nakita namin itong bahay na to And we really like the location, we really like the place, open plan siya, not like uh, the usual um, British house na maraming mga mga division. So, talagang nagustuhan namin siya. So, kahit wala pa, uh, kahit one year old, or, yeah, one year old pa lang si Lauren on our our baby, um, we decided to purchase the house. And that time, um, lockdown, COVID, no? so, we got a good deal dahil ang presyo ng mga properties noon is bumaba dahil nga sa pandemic. Kaya sabi namin, it's perfect timing to buy a new house. Kaya ito na po yun. And, uh, and I'm sure lahat naman tayo, lalo na pag may pamilya na, no, gusto natin magkaroon ng sarili nating bahay. Kaya, um, bibigyan pa namin kayo ng tips kung paano niyo po yung gagawin dito sa United Kingdom. Okay? So, here we go. Hindi po alam ng asawa ko na mag-vlog kami. Impromptu na lang. Yan, nasa garden siya. Good morning! Good morning! Busy? Pagod? Good morning! Say good morning mga kabayan! Anong ginagawa mo? Garden. Garden siya. <laughs> For today's vlog, we're going to give advice on how to buy their property in United Kingdom. Okay ba yun? So, ayan po yung garden namin. Kailangan linisin. Nilinis pa namin. Fake grass. We have fake grass. And we have pond. That we need to clean as well. Oh! Tinanggal mo na yung Christmas tree! Oh, wow. Ayan. So, this is our house, mga kabayan. This is our garden. Ayan yung likod ng bahay namin. Meron kaming pond. At yan yung may games room inside. Ay, 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 outside the house. May detached portion. And we also have a utility area. Ang tawag nila dito utility sa atin, dirty kitchen. 
Dito po sa United Kingdom, iba't iba ang klase ng home ownership. Unang-una po, may tinatawag tayo na freehold ownership. Ito po yung mas okay sana dahil unlimited time sa yung uh, property. So, bibili mo siya and hanggang sa uh, limited number of years sa iyo yun. So, pwede mo ipamana yung property mo sa mga anak mo or kung kayo na mo gusto ibigay. No? Unlike the other types of property, katulad ng leasehold property, um, the property still belongs to the landlord pero for a certain number of years ay maaari mo siyang uh, maging pag-aari. Pero sabi ko nga, limited lang siya. So, depende sa kontrata kung gaano katagal magiging sa iyo yung property. Kapag nag-expire na yon babalik na sa landlord yung um, ownership. And we also have this what you call shared ownership. Pag shared ownership naman po, ay uh, portion lang ng property ang sa iyo. For example, it could be uh, 60% is uh, sa individual and uh, 40% is sa uh, government. Okay, so portion lang so kaya very limited lang yung mga pwede, mga rights mo na pwedeng gawin dun sa property. So syempre, ang pinaka-ideal pa rin kung kaya ng budget is to purchase a property under freehold para sa iyo talaga at pag-aari ng iyong bahay. Okay? So mga kabayan, kapag po nag-decide na kayong bumili ng bahay ninyo, ang may recommend ko po is una muna is tumingin kayo sa website ng mga house for sale. Uh, ang marirecommend ko po is yung Right Move and Zoopla. Yan po yung ginamit namin to look for a house that you want. Anywhere in the UK, meron po sila. And kapag nakita po kayo ng gusto ninyo, you can call the agent to schedule for a viewing. Huwag po kayo mahiyang tumawag dahil free lang po ang viewing, no obligations attached. Siyempre, importante makita nyo muna yung bahay. And kung hindi nyo type, okay lang. Just tell them that you're not, uh, this is not for you. And, um... Uh, it's it's alright because um, buying a house is a major decision and you have to find the right one for you dahil uh, you will spend the rest of your life there and if you're going into mortgage, you, a big portion of your salary will go to the mortgage to pay for your house. So take your time to decide. Don't rush. Make sure that you the house that you're purchasing is the perfect house for you and your family. So this is our living area, mga kabayan. Uh, our favorite spot to watch Anything on the television, YouTube, Netflix, any movies, series, yan. It took us a while to to decorate it dahil medyo may kamahalan po ang mga furnitures dito sa United Kingdom. And we want it to be very minimalist yung style. Dahil wala po tayong kasambahay para tumulong sa pagdilinis ng bahay, no? Now, in purchasing a property, the, the big question is how much can you afford para bumili ng property? So, syempre, you have to stick to your budget, especially kapag po tayo ay mag apply ng mortgage or loan. Now, just to give you an idea, um, ang loan po or ang mortgage, ina-approve po yan based sa kanilang calculation. And for example, you will purchase a house worth 300,000 pounds. So, kailangan po meron kang at least 10% cash on hand to purchase that house. So, kung uh, 300,000, uh, 10% po yan is 30,000 pounds. So, kailangan meron ka sa banko. And the rest, they will calculate based on your annual income. So, for example, ang annual income mo ay uh, 50,000 pounds. Um, 50,000 pounds, multiply that by 5, yan po yung kanilang estimate calculation. So, that is around 250,000. So, 250,000 plus your money in the bank na 30,000, that is 280,000 pounds. So, kung yan lang po ang calculation, kulang pa to pay for the 300,000 uh, pounds na worth of the property. So, hindi po kayo ma-approve sa mortgage kapag ganyan po ang resulta. Um, kung kayo lang po ang bibili, pero kung meron kang asawa na also working, pwede nyo pong i-combine yung annual income ninyo to come up with a bigger amount of, of money to purchase for the house. And by that time, ma-approve po kayo. So, that's an estimate lang po ng ating uh, calculation in purchasing a house. So, kapag na-determine nyo na po kung how much you can buy, um, more or less, alam mo na kung anong mga klase ng property ang titignan ninyo. Kasi sa bawat area, iba-iba ang presyo. Sa, siyempre, sa bawat uh, bahay, iba-iba din sa klase. Depende sa klase ng bahay na gusto ninyo. Kung detached ba, semi-detached, terrace house, flat, apartment. So, depende po yan sa afford ng ating magiging budget. 
our kitchen mga kabayan. It's lunch time so magluluto na po ako. I will cook uh, fried fish. Lagyan natin ng uh, uh, breadings and lalagyan natin ng curry uh, sauce. So, most of the houses na mabibili niyo po dito sa United Kingdom ay may mga built-in appliance na po, especially sa kitchen. So, ito pong kitchen na to binili namin siya. Uh, may kasama na itong mga, uh, like for example, itong dishwasher. Kasama na po yan. And then, we also have our uh, ovens. Tatlo po siya. Yung isa, microwave oven. Ito, steamer oven. Ito, oven lang. And then, we also have the coffee maker. Dito rin po yung aming uh, freezer. And then we have the fridge. At yung pong hub, may kas yung induction, may kasama na rin hub. So, ganyan po. Uh, mga built-in appliance na po kas kas uh, karamihan ng mga bahay dito sa United Kingdom. The rest, mga ano na po yan. Mga, mga cabinets. House, the next thing you need to do is to apply for a mortgage or loan. Ang ginawa po namin ng asawa ko is we hired a broker, a good broker, para maghanap ng magandang um, deal sa bank para makakuha kami ng uh, mas mababang interest. Okay, kasi syempre, mas mababa interest, mas mababa yung pabayaran mo, di ba? So, yun po yung ginawa namin and um, all, we, all we had to do uh, was to provide all the necessary documents na kailangan mga proof of ID, mga payslip, uh, uh, proof of financials mo. Okay? And then, sila na pong bahala maghanap ng bank na may magandang offer uh, that will give us a good interest and that will approve our loan. So, all you need to do after submitting all the requirements is just to wait for the result. So, kabayan, yung pag-hire po ng uh, mortgage broker, that is your option. Okay? Pwede po kayo mag-hire uh, because uh, you want them to look for the best product for you for you, so you can get the best interest. Or, pwede naman po dumerecho na rin po kayo sa bank. So, it's up to you. Um, but, in our case, we decided to hire a broker para we get a good deal. Um, so, yun po. And then, uh, once na-approve na yung inyong uh, mortgage in principle, that's the time that you can now make an offer sa binibili nyo pong, o sa gusto nyo bilhin na bahay. Okay? So, for example, if the house is worth uh, like 300000 you can make an offer, for example, mga 290, 280. So, pwede po kayong tumawad. Okay, but syempre, it all depends. Pwede nilang i-accept, pwede nilang i-reject. So, swerte kung i-accept yung offer para syempre medyo mas makatipid tayo. Hello, Lauren. This is her favorite spot. Say hi. Hello, everybody. Hello, Lauren Ho. Ito pong bahay na bilhin namin, nung tinanggap po nung uh, seller yung offer namin na slightly lower than the actual market value, um, ang una po namin ginawa is nag-hire po kami ng surveyor. Yung surveyor po, ang gagawin po nila, professional sila, to check and inspect the house kung okay ba siya, kung, um, kung energy saving ba siya, kung may problema ba siya. So, importante malaman mo yon kasi kung may malaking problema and okay ka lang naman na, na paayos yon at least, pwede ka pang makapag-negotiate dun sa seller. And, pero, kung very minor lang naman, um, okay na rin yun. So, at least, importante is alam mo na worth it yung binibili mong bahay. So, um, may bayad pa ang surveyor yung sa, sa amin po, I think binayaran namin is around 700 to 800 pounds to hire a surveyor to inspect the entire house. Yan ang aming mga kapitbahay, mga kabayan. This is our neighborhood. Nanap po asawa ko, nagtapon ng basura, ang tagal. May mga basura sa garden. Ito, may mga basura dyan. Every Friday kasi may collection ng garbage. So, yan. Sa labas, pati mga kapitbahay namin, sa labas yung mga basura nila. So, this is our house. Our home sweet home. Yan. Kakaiba siya as compared sa mga itsura ng bahay ng mga kapitbahay namin. 
Sabi ko nga sa inyo dito sa UK, if you want to build a house na uh, ibang style, um, hindi basta-basta. Kailangan po may mga planning permission. Depende sa location mo. Aside from hiring a broker, you also need a solicitor or lawyer to represent you when you purchase a house. Sabi ko nga po kanina, yan po yung forte ng asawa ko. Um, he represents his clients uh, when they purchase the house, gives them um, advices, uh, kung ano yung mga kailangan nilang i-check, kung ano yung mga planning permissions na kailangan nila. So, everything they need to do para smooth sailing yung pag-exchange nila ng contract. So, later on, tatanungin natin si husband, how much does it cost here in the UK to hire a, a solicitor to represent them? Because in our case, um, yung colleague ng asawa ko ang represent sa kanya because he cannot represent himself when we purchase our house. So, um, tatanungin natin kung magkano yung regular rate kasi ang alam ko, nagbabago yan depende sa, sa property, sa location, sa, sa mga uh, back-end work na ginawa nila kasi minsan may mga problematic uh, properties na marami mga kailangan mga i-check. No? So, um, it all depends uh, uh, sa situation, it all depends sa mga circumstances, yung mga rate. But more or less, mag let's, let's ask for a uh, figure para meron tayong idea. Okay? This is our dining area, mga kabayan. Kain na. Ano ulam? Uh, fish katsu. Uh, egg fried rice, it looks like. <laughs> it looks like. It looks like fried. It looks like food. <laughs> Kain tayo. And a uh, pineapple shake. Cheers. B, what yes. do you do? I'm a property lawyer. So, do we need a property lawyer in order to buy and sell a house in the UK? Yes, or a licensed conveyancer. Well, why do we need you? What do you do for the clients? Uh, we do the legals to make sure that the client is buying good marketable property to advise them of any uh, onerous or adverse uh, interest noted on the title or on the searches and to flag up any issues uh, that can be of concern to them if they wish to purchase the property. There may be covenants noted in the title that could restrict development. Uh, there may be easement rights afforded to other properties which they may not like because it involves them entering onto their land. Um, there's all various sorts of uh, legal aspects to buying and selling that we need to report to the client to ensure that they're satisfied with buying or selling uh, in a transaction. Yeah. Can you give us an overview uh, of the entire process from the time they make an offer up to the day of completion? So when you make an offer uh, on a property, you need to instruct a lawyer or licensed conveyancer to act for you if you're selling or buying. Um, you need to complete forms. These are called Law Society Protocol Forms, which provides information to the buyer uh, so that they know what they're buying. Uh, these include fittings and contents uh, and uh, various questions regarding boundaries, disputes, flooding uh, or any uh, development they've carried out at the property. This needs all to be disclosed to any potential buyer and the buyer will also carry out their due diligence by instructing their lawyer or licensed conveyancer to carry out searches on their behalf. The lawyer then reviews those searches and reports to the client uh, in respect of the searches and, and uh, any uh, issues that may have been flagged up on those searches. Um, once uh, the lawyer has reported to the client and, 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 and the client is satisfied with the title and that there's no adverse uh, or onerous provisions noted on the searches or on the title itself and that's when the buyer proceeds to exchange of contracts. Exchange of contracts is the point where the parties, both buyer and seller, become legally bound to complete the transaction. If they fail to complete the transaction, 
Uh, they are subject to penalties uh, in, the, in, the way, in the form of damages uh, and they can be quite substantial. So 99.9% .9 of the time this never happens because they know the consequences involved. At the point of exchange, um, that is when the, fixed, uh, the completion date is fixed uh, and also the buyer then becomes responsible for ensuring that there is adequate insurance on the property. Okay. Uh, during the period between exchange and completion, the seller will be re arranging removals, uh, as will the buyer, uh, to ensure that on the date of completion, the monies are also uh, transferred to the seller's lawyer. Uh, so they need to ensure that their finances are in place. Uh, on the day of completion, uh, the buyer's lawyer will send the monies to the seller's solicitors. The seller's solicitors, uh, seller's solicitors will receive the monies, and then they will confirm completion by authorizing release of the keys to the estate agents. The buyer's lawyer will then call the client to confirm completion and to collect the keys with the agents. That's when they legally become uh, the owner of the property and, uh, and, then, and then the lawyer or the licensed conveyancer will then proceed to doing post-completion formalities in registering uh, the client, the buyer, as the, the new owner for the property. Uh, and that's about it and, and that usually takes six to eight weeks from the point the contracts are received so on average the conveyancing process can take six to eight weeks but it can be shorter it can be longer uh, depending on how quickly searches come in depending on uh, whether your survey flags anything uh, adverse or onerous uh, in which case you may wish to renegotiate the purchase price uh, and, and in which case then a new mortgage offer needs to be issued as you will need to inform the lender that the price has changed by way of renegotiation. And any renegotiation needs at first instance to go through uh, the agents as intermediaries for both seller and buyer. And that then is transmitted to uh, the solicitors by way of a revised memorandum of sale. The memorandum of sale is an instruction to both lawyers uh, as confirmation that the sale price has indeed changed. Okay, so on average, um, how much do we need to prepare uh, to pay for a solicitor lawyer to act for them? Again, it depends on how much. Most solicitors charge uh, on the basis of how much the sale price is. So the fees can be staggered, they can be fixed, um, but it also depends on how much work is required. Usually there is more work required on leasehold and new build properties than there are on straight freehold transactions. Uh, so legal fees need to be commensurate with the amount of work that is required in those transactions. Um, but on average, we're talking about 1,500 to 2,000 uh, pounds, depending on the price of the property and depending on what work is required. You can get cheaper. Uh, usually the cheaper uh, uh, lawyers or conveyances are based north of England. And, and, and that's just because the standard of living in the South is, is slightly more higher. Uh, so there you go, mga kabayan. Thank you sa aking husband for his uh, professional advice. Meron tayong free <laughs> professional legal advice from our award-winning solicitor. So, I hope marami po kayo natutunan. Okay. I hope marami po kayo natutunan and I hope na-enjoy niyo po ang ad, aming mini house tour. We're very uh, proud of our house, ang fruits of our labor. And sa mga um, nangangarap at magpaplano rin pong bumili ng inyong sariling property here in the UK. We wish you all the best. We wish you all the luck. And um, yeah, all the best to everyone. Stay happy, stay happy. Spread the love. Don't want nothing melancholy Just a little eggnog and holly On this holiday